What's up you guys, it's your boy Mason uh, coming at you with this video today. I wanted to talk about something that um, something that we talked about in church yesterday that uh, it was in a it was in a, a class that's for young adults. Um, and it's something that I'm preaching this for myself and it's for whoever else needs it, whoever else hears it that needs it. Um, but it's talking about how in John chapter 8, the the woman caught in adultery. And uh, I'm going to put the verses up here and when I edit this and talk about it. But John chapter 8, the woman caught in adultery. And how, how Jesus responds to this woman should wreck us as, as Christians and it should wreck us in the terms of mercy and grace and forgiveness and in the way that we live our lives in response to this because this isn't just to this woman this is how jesus looks at us in general like if you've been struggling lately if you've been struggling lately and the way that jesus acts to this woman that's how he acts toward you so, John chapter 8, an adulteress forgiven. At dawn, he being Jesus, went to the temple again, and all the people were coming to him. He sat down and began to teach them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. I want to say something very quick about scribes and Pharisees, because I've been guilty of being in line with that. I, 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 I believe I have. Um, it's just, you get to be at such a point in your life especially with having faith and being a Christian, you start developing a little bit of a, of, of pride because you know that you're the righteousness of God in Christ. You know that, you know, that you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not below. You know who you say you are. But we have to always have that balance of, I know who God says I am. I know who I am and that I'm better. I'm better than this sin that so easily tries to entangle me. But it's, I'm only better because of Christ in me. It's nothing on my own merit. It's nothing of myself because if I start thinking about it as myself, that's when you're gonna fall and fail. Die trying. Because none of us are good on our own. We're all equal and we're all equal in the eyes of God and the fact that we all need Jesus, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We wake up every day and we all need his mercy and love and his grace to go about our day and to live and live for him. Without Jesus, it's dirty rags. It is dirty rags attempting and trying our best, boxing against the wind to be good and to do good things. And it's worthless because it ultimately does not matter because there's nothing that we can do to earn our salvation. There's nothing that we can do to get into heaven. There's nothing that we can do that's good enough. Like the law was given for us to see that it is impossible for any human being on this planet to keep the law and every single part of the law on his own, on her own, without God, impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With man, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. That's why God sent Jesus to die for our sins, to be the sacrifice for our sins, to be the fulfillment of the law. And for us to know like, wow, we don't have to be sacrificing the blood of bulls and goats anymore. We have a sacrifice for all time that is the ultimate sacrifice and propition for our sins, which is Jesus. But in response to that, that's why we should live a life that is worthy of what Jesus has done and live a life of doing good. We don't live a good, godly life to get anything. We do it because of what Jesus has already done for us and because he has died to set us free from sin so that it does not entangle us or bound us anymore that we're no longer bound to sin we're bound to christ we're bound to righteousness and we ought to live in a way that is pleasing and approving unto him um so whenever you start 
thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to. Whenever you, if there's people in your life that bring up your past and your sins and things that you've done, when you start getting a big head and puffed up and you're like, well, I'm this and I'm that. And I know that God says I'm this and that. That's when pride comes in and that's when pride can come before a fall. And it's always important for us to remain humble. Know who you are in Christ. Know your worth. Know your value. Know that you are worth dying over. Know that you are worth so much. Have your identity in Christ and know that you are better than the sin that tries to entangle you. But that's only because of Jesus. That's only because of Christ. You are still you are still a man or a woman that needs Jesus every day and can do nothing good of your own merit without without God. No, like, always gotta check yourself before you wreck yourself. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Like, it's true. So, but anyway, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery, making her stand at the center Teacher, they said to him, this woman was caught in the act of committing adultery and the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. That's another thing back in the Old Testament, you commit adultery, you get stoned. There's no, you, 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 you die, you get stoned. Dumb. So what do you say? They asked this to try to trap Jesus in order that they might have evidence to accuse him. Jesus stopped, Jesus stooped down and started writing on the ground with his finger. This is, I what I picture here, this is a line in the sand. These Pharisees thought that they were so much, like, and it, it's, it's easy to fall into this as a Christian, and it's easy to fall into this, especially if you've been somebody living a life of purity or somebody living a life of godliness for such a long time. It's easy to get a big head and get puffed up and act this way, but Jesus, he doesn't argue with these guys. He doesn't get a certain way with them. He literally just stoops down. He writes a line in the sand. It's pretty much it's pretty much Jesus. I, I picture it like this. The woman caught in adultery is right here. Jesus and the Pharisees are right here. Jesus writes a line in the sand between the two of them. And it's pretty much, all right, if you don't have any sin, if you've never committed adultery, if you've never messed up like she's messed up go ahead cross the line and try to say that you're better than her try to say that you don't need grace and forgiveness as much as she does go ahead try it. whoever whoever can and the only person that can is jesus so maybe there was the maybe jesus was standing with the woman caught in adultery and he wrote a line in the sand between the pharisees and her and him that's what i picture but um then he stood up and said to them the one without sin among you should be the first to throw a stone at her let he who is without sin be the first to cast a stone at her then he stooped down again and continued right on the ground and when they heard this they left one by one starting with the older men and only jesus was left with her they all just, they all said nothing. Jesus handled it very well. They they could do nothing but just leave. They all started leaving until it was just Jesus and the woman caught in adultery. Then Jesus stood up and I imagine this was a, this was an emotional conversation. I imagine tears, teary eyes. I imagine the woman was besides herself. Because this, this is the son of God looking at you saying these, saying these things. Like Jesus stood up and said to her, woman, where are they? Your accusers, your condemned, like, where are they? No one condemns you. Not even me. Nobody does. And she, and he says that he says, where are they? And she says, no one, Lord. He says, who condemns you? She says, no one, Lord. And Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. And that ends it. That's, that's, so that's John chapter 8, verses 2 to 11. Um, it's just the, it's the go and sin no more. 
and again, I said at the beginning of this, this is preaching to myself. If you have been like so entangled, it's just, it's so, there's, there's, you pick your hard and you pick your easy. Going and living a life of not sinning anymore is hard. But living a life of sin and dealing with the consequences is hard. Going to Jesus about your sin or, or living a life of sin and just giving in to, to whatever is easy. Listening to your flesh, giving in to your flesh is easy. Living a life to where you run to Jesus with your problems is also easy because he's right there just waiting for you to give it to him. I went to a, an event a couple of weeks ago with a bunch of guys and I mean, it whooped our butts. <laughs> Um, but something that we kept doing an exercise, we were on a beach, we were on this beach for like two hours doing exercises on the sand and then running into the water, getting out of the water, going and doing the exercises again on the sand, going into the water. We were like wallowing in this sand and it's like wallowing in the sand is every time that you've screwed up with sin and stayed in sin. Um... And then going into the water is every time you've confessed. And it's every time you've allowed Jesus to wash you from that. But it's also knowing the water is like a like when you've been baptized. But the water is also knowing Jesus paid the price for your sins. Take it to him. Surrender it to him and let him wash you clean. Be washed by the word. And it's not easy, but it is. It's it's a mental thing. Decide what is going to be your easy and what is going to be your hard. Because no matter how hard things are, when you have the Son of God right there next to you, in your corner, standing up, cheering you on, who else do you need? Who else do you need? Now, when you have other people in your corner as well, especially like brothers in Christ, it's it's incredible. And it's and it's even more of a reason to keep going. So I just wanted to read that and encourage myself and everybody else today. Go and sin no more because it's possible. And it's more possible when we think less about our sin and we think more about Jesus. Because if you just keep thinking about an elephant, if you keep thinking about sin over and over and over and over, keep talking about sin over and over and over, you're gonna sin. But if you think about Jesus and you just think about the fact of this woman was caught in adultery and Jesus was the only one with authority to stone her and kill her and he looked at her with love in his heart and his eyes and said, neither do I, go and sin no more. Now it's up to us and our obligation, our part of the job is to go and sin no more. But we only do that by fixing our eyes on Jesus. He's the key. So let's go and sin no more. By fixing our eyes on him. You guys have a blessed day. I love y'all. Jesus loves y'all. With great power comes great responsibility. God bless. Peace.